Okay, so then when you're looking at this list of, list of chemicals here, what you do is you go onto this chart and you say, all right, where is everything on this chart? And what actually is going to react in a chemical reaction? The thing here in this list that wants to give up electrons the most is going to react with the thing that wants to take them the most. Now that doesn't mean that there, are, there aren't other things that might want to gain and lose electrons as well, but we always react the strongest oxidizing agent with the strongest reducing agent. Now, who are those in this question? Well, when you look on this chart and you're looking for the chemical in this list of chemicals here that's going to be the highest on the left, what you're going to find is you're going to find that silver metal is the strongest oxidizing agent. Now, somebody's going to say to me, yeah, well, you know, chem guy, that silver ion that you found there, and it's pretty high up, it's right there, but nitrate is right next to it, right there too. And it's pretty high as well. Yeah, but here's the thing. Nitrate on the chart says it needs to be with H positive, which is hydrogen ion, in order to be an oxidizing agent. If there's no H positive in your list of chemicals here, you can't use it. So just remember, when you are writing a list of chemicals, you need to have every chemical in that half reaction on the left hand side of that reaction present in your list in order for it to be an oxidizing or reducing agent. Now, who on this side here, and by the way, water's on, on, the, on the left hand side too. Water's way down here though, and silver ion is way higher. Now, who is the lowest on the right hand side? Well, of all these chemicals here, the lead solid is down here on the left-hand side. Uh, up here, you're going to find water as well. Water is kind of a weak reducing agent, and it's a weak oxidizing agent. But sometimes it might be the strongest in your list. Maybe that will come later. Now, so who in this list is going to be the SRA? You're looking for the... You're not looking for, you're looking for the SRA and you find it to be the lead metal. And by the way, you better be really, really careful about one thing here. When you write that list of chemicals and you see silver nitrate here, you don't put down AG. You put down AG positive because you broke that into its ions. Now look, a lot of students just get really sloppy, maybe teachers too, sometimes I get sloppy. And they don't write down their charges. And then they got a list of chemicals and they think that they're dealing with silver metal. And you're not. You're dealing with silver ion. And silver metal is a reducing agent and silver ion is an oxidizing agent. And you got to be careful to write down everything properly in your list. Now, when you find the SOA and the SRA, all you do is this. You write down the half reactions exactly the way they look in their da data booklet. Sort of. Here's where I'm going with that. When you see the oxidizing agent, which is undergoing reduction in your data booklet, take that equation that you find in the data booklet and you write down that reaction exactly the way it looks there. That's it. Just write it down. So there it is right there. That's the SOA reaction. Now, the SRA, well, if you wrote down the SRA exactly the way you see it in the data booklet, you'd have two things undergoing reduction and that's not possible. Really what you found is this being the RA, the reducing agent, the thing that's undergoing oxidation, so it's got to lose electrons. The electrons have to be on the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so what does that mean then? It means that you've got to take the SRA, and yeah, it stands for reducing agent, but now it stands for reverse the sucker. So here's the thing. Whenever you find that SRA on the right-hand side, the right-hand side of your chart as being the one that's lowest on the right, you've got to reverse that reaction. So that's what you do. You write it down in the reverse of what the booklet or the chart, whatever you're using, says. And those are the two half reactions there that are involved in this reaction. Now, by the way, if you write down the potentials, the, what we call the, the uh, electrical potentials, the reduction potentials, uh, the voltages for these two half reactions, the E or the E naught for this reaction right here, not meaning against, just standard conditions. Uh, for that one, it's positive, z oh, positive 0 0.80 volts. And for this half reaction, the E naught was, in the data booklet, it was negative 0.13 volts. But here's the thing. If you reverse the equation, which is what you do, you reverse the sign. And so that now becomes positive 
0.013 volts. You reverse the equation, you reverse the sign. Now here's the cool thing. In order to get the net reaction here, add those two equations together. But look at this. I want to gain one electron. I want to lose two. I'm going to lose two. If you want to take it, you got to take two. Well, then I better go get my brother. And so we need another one of these Ag positives to be able to gain electron two, which means this. And by the way, you have to, have to, have to, have to do this. You have to make sure that the electrons lost equal in total the amount of electrons gained. You don't have electrons left over ever in the net equation. They must, well, we'll say, cancel out because there has to be an equal gain and an equal loss of electrons. So what's going to happen here is that you're going to multiply this entire half reaction by two. And when you do that, you get 2Ag positive Aq plus Pb solid. And that's going to make the Pb2 positive Aq right here times 2 for that Ag, and you're going to get 2 Ag solid. Notice that that 2 electrons there cancels with that 2 electrons there. There's your net reaction. Now you're going to say, okay, Kim Gat, what's the total voltage of this? Well, the E0 for this reaction is going to be these two added together. And I'm going to do that. And you're going to say, no, 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 I'm smart. Here's what you did that's dumb. You multiplied that equation by 2. Don't you have to multiply the voltage? And the answer is no. It's not like that energetics unit where we were doing that with delta H's. That's true for delta H, and it will be true for things called delta G and delta S. But you, guess what? Not for the E of the reaction. You never multiply the, 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 the voltage here, or what we call the, 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 uh, the, the voltage, or the, the, the thermodynamic driving force that moves electrons from one point to another is completely independent of the stoichiometry and the equation balancing. So the deal is that right there, that's all you have to do. All you have to do is always reverse the SRA and add it to the SOA and you get the voltage. And by the way, that's a positive number. And that positive number means that this is a spontaneous reaction. If this reaction right here was, when you added these two voltages, voltages together, a negative overall total, that just means non-spontaneous. There we go. So positive voltage, spontaneous, this reaction occurs, you put a piece of lead into a silver solution, you get silver metal formed out of that. Cool.